Imagine diaries, Grand Central Terminus. New York was cold, icy cold. The thermometer might have said it was one degree Celsius, but the wind blowing in from the Hudson and the East Rivers made it feel like it was ten below. It was the kind of cold that gets under your skin, that runs through your veins and freezes your bone marrow. The city had been kind to me, a friendly place, happy, helpful people, no sense of danger, none of the fear that had dogged me on my previous visit. It was my last day, my feet ached and the cold was playing havoc with my sinuses. I had a great time, but it was time to go home. As always, at the end of my days walking the city, I ended up at Grand Central Terminus. I loved the vibe of a busy transport hub at rush hour. The architecture, the Apple store, the food hall, and most of all, grumpy cafe with the coffee that took the edge off the chill and thawed my bones just enough. It was the perfect people-watching spot, and I, as I was walking up Fifth Avenue, I was looking forward to getting there. I've been thinking earlier in the day that I'd found the root cause of New York's insomnia. It was no wonder the city never slept when sirens blared from emergency vehicles all hours of the days and nights. But if I thought the norm was bad, it was nothing compared to the cacophony of noise that greeted my ears this evening. It was like the chase scene in the Blues Brothers. Hundreds of NYPC cars flocking towards Grand Central. Amongst the sirens, I was aware of shouting, chanting. It sounded like, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. As I turned into East 42nd Street, I saw the source of the chanting and the destination of the police cars. The entrances to the stations were overflowing with people holding banners and placards. The chants went from, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, to how do you spell murder? The police were watching on, out in force but keeping a watching brief at the moment. It was striking to note that the protesters were mostly black with some white faces, while the police presence was the opposite. I felt a sudden shift in mood. I was no longer in the friendly city. Now there was an atmosphere of distrust under the heavy grey sky. I watched on a little while, shivering from the cold. There was real anger on the protesters' faces, while the cops wore faces of patronising contempt. I was scared, scared and bewildered. This would have been an uncomfortable situation to be caught up in back at home. But on foreign soil, it was a nightmare. This was a tinderbox. One spark and it could get ugly. Very ugly. And I didn't want to be caught in the crossfire. I decided to give Grumpy Cafe a miss and head back to the relative safety of my hotel. <laughs>